Hey, hello. You're stuck in traffic with Wolf Gorlick, a couple minute riff on IT and IT security. Today, talking about the compromised remote viewers and what it might mean to your network. Um, this video is late <laughs> because I've been on conference calls um, for quite a while as I drive down to another state to visit with a customer. And of course, I'm not in traffic, I'm parked. So be that as it may. It's pretty easy to tell, right, when my behavior veers. Hey, the video's light. Hey, he's not driving. Hey, wait a minute. Uh, but it can be kind of hard to tell when other people's behavior veers off track, right? Because you might not have the visibility, you might not have the senses, you might not have the heartbeat. So as a general tip, you want to think about different instances where normal people's behavior may go awry and that change in behavior may indicate a threat. I'll give you an example. Data point one, go to my PC. Data point two, team viewer. Go to my PC this past weekend uh, was talked about pretty extensively because there's a lot of suspicious behavior noticed by the go to my PC people um, that indicated attackers were using it to gain access to other people's computers. Team viewer, a couple weeks previous, has a similar situation, right? We're not all but a fraction of the attacks that came to TeamViewer were resulting in someone else gaining control of uh, another person's computer. So when you think about it, go to my PC, TeamViewer, all these types of remote viewers. That's the idea. We want to let you come into me so you can see my computer, so you can do things. Maybe it's for support reasons. Uh, maybe it's for, um, I don't know, why else would you do that really? Collaboration reasons? It could be for different reasons, that's my point. <laughs> so, whatever the reason is, that's why we use these remote viewer software. But now we have instances where the criminals are getting access to our computers through this remote access. And uh, that leads me to ask you two questions that the answers may be uncomfortable. First is, if someone in your network right now is compromised because of go to my PC, how would you know? At the network layer, could, could you detect that? Is that something that would be triggered on, alerted on? Do you have visibility and instrumentation? How would you know? Second is, if someone's computer is being remotely used, right, and they are logged in, so their creds are now being used by an attacker, what subsequent controls do you have to stop them from doing badness? If I'm logged in as your DBA, can I download your database? Can I get access to all your sensitive files? If I'm down, if I'm logged in right now as your systems admin, can I get out to domain administrator? If I'm logged in as someone who does maintenance on your point of sale systems, can I install software or gain access to credit cards? What are the subsequent controls? Now we talk about control redundancy along the attack path, right? So if control one fails. So first, do you have control one? Can you, can you catch these remote viewers? And second, what is the redundant points you have along the path? Give that some thought. I don't think many of us are really truly prepared for that. There's other things we can do, but I don't think many of us really think about it too, too thoroughly. And the attacks against TeamViewer and go to my PC, in my mind, has reinforced that. So uh, take some time. Let me know what you see. You know, hit me up on social media. Try me a comment. And... Uh, I'm going to go get in some more meetings. <laughs> Cheers.